come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. And these are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Holly. Me. Holly, we went a little mad tonight. (laughs) We We all go a little mad mad. sometimes. (laughs) (laughs) We were just before we started recording. (laughs) What we watch? I I think I am going mad because when I went to say my name, I almost said psycho. (laughs) 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 Well, it's close enough, Holly. Yeah, that's how we all feel at certain moments. Um, But we didn't watch Psycho tonight. No, we watched Psycho 2. Psycho 2. Sequel. (laughs) Sequel. (laughs) Told you. Told you. Yeah. I mean, why go after Psycho? What more can be said about Psycho? Right. That's a true. Right. Like, everyone said something yeah. about Psycho. Fuck I mean, that. Psycho to, 2. To be honest, the debate wasn't Psycho or Psycho 2. It was Psycho 2 or Psycho the Remake. That was yeah. my debate. Mm-hmm. Right. Which, I, stay tuned. It will come. It will, oh, it come. will, it will come. still come. It will, it will come. A thing like that cannot yeah, be ignored. It's been on my list for a long time. It will be here eventually. But I had never seen this movie, so Get I out. wanted to watch it. What? Right? I had never seen this. Wait, have you seen Psycho 3? No. Have you seen Psycho 4, the beginning? Stop it. Okay. <laughs> Our four psychos. We'll get into them. Um, nor have I seen Bates Motel. <laughs> oh, <laughs> didn't well, they go we'll for that. like seven seasons or something insane like that, right? Uh, Bates Motel like was on for a long like time. That, yeah, that is just so wild when you said that. I initially didn't think of the new, sh- the newer show. Yeah. I thought of the TV movie with Bud Court. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I have not seen that either. <laughs> I, I have a conspiracy theory Please. that, that yeah. Freddie Eddie Highmore like really fucked up with ABC or something because he was on Bates Motel for like five years or whatever, yeah. Yeah. and then he was on that The, the Good Doctor. The doctor show, Isn't that yeah. still and on? I think still it's still on. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, is you know how like Bruno Mars is allegedly in casino debt? Well, I think he's in like ABC, ABC debt or debt. something, and he's like owned by them <laughs> until he gets to a certain age. I'm just fascinated that we got to Bruno Mars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mars and- oh yeah, there was that story like a month ago <laughs> that he owed like a million dollars in back credit to a casino for yeah, and, uh, gambling debts. Yeah, that's so crazy. he'll be able to pay yeah. it off soon. Well, what year did this movie? <laughs> yeah, what year? Grace or screen? 1983. Okay, directed by. Directed by Richard Franklin, not okay. Alfred Hitchcock. Not Alfred Hitchcock. When did wow. Alfred Hitchcock leave this mortal coil? Was the year this came it out? Was, it wasn't. It, no, it wasn't because they asked his daughter like uh, permission to do this movie. Okay, yeah. it was um, 1980. I was gonna I say, say it was like huh? right before this. So yeah, yeah because no one would dare. No, until after he was no. dead. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> like you remember that that's, when that's like me. that's people, the reverence because <laughs> yeah. because they made four Jaws movies. Yeah, and he's alive. And the, yeah. that's the reverence and the Hitchcock. book. The book Psycho Two came out the year before this. The, uh, reading up on this, I just yeah. I didn't know that he had kept going with the books. Yeah, Robert yeah. Block. Psycho. Uh, Robert Block wrote the yeah. original. Original novel, Correct. and then he wrote a sequel novel, and another one, Psycho House. Yeah, that's the third one. Yeah, which came out before the third movie. Yeah, but so. no relation. The stories are not really. No, no. I did actually read part of uh, the Psycho Two novel. It's, I didn't like it at all. It, I mean, that's no. That's most people's consensus. What, yeah. What's the story of the Psycho Two novel? It's they do start with Norman. Uh-huh. Like it's this. It's the similar premise. Like for the beginning, he, it's him coming back. Sure. Um. But then it gets into like Hollywood exploitation of murders and like, oh, it, yeah, they're like, making a movie. They're making a movie about it. So it's all like, <laughs> this sounds great. It in theory, yeah, but, but it's not. It's all like bashing Hollywood and how they like exploit like real life crime. And they do. No, no, agreed, agreed. But it's <laughs> okay. not like an, an entertaining one. Not, all right, not a fun entertaining no. at all. Just kind of no, like, no, no, no. Was, it has infuriating like, twists. Let's yeah. put it that way. Or you will uh, not get what you so want saying, out of that yeah. story. And, 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 Richard and, Block and, was very unhappy with what they did with Psycho and he got mad and wrote another book bashing it. I mean, I can't imagine he would Because be, in the book, uh, Norman dies very quickly. Oh, he comes back for like the beginning, but then he dies very quickly in the book. Interesting. Yeah, not how the movies go. No, they. Yeah, but you don't know that for like until like. Yeah, you don't know. You don't know. Sorry, we're spoiling the book. I guess. (laughs) (laughs) But from what I've read, nobody likes the book. Like nobody. Interesting. Is it? Is it as uh, thin as the original cycle? Because the original cycle is very short. That's a good question. I don't know how long. Uh, I wonder. He just went like four hundred pages of. I mean, I remember it being a novel. You know, novel cycle. But the original cycle, the one I have, is like got very fine print. I mean. 
they okay. could print that as a regular. But, but yeah, it, it's kind of like unanimous that the book sucked. So they brought in Mr. Tom Holland to write the script. Tom Holland. What do we know Tom yeah. Holland from? I mean, obviously Fright Night and Child's, Child's Play. Play. And like, he's, he's written things. I mean, yeah. he wrote this here tonight. Uh, Tom Holland. We love Tom Holland. I don't know if he gets enough credit for this because a lot of times... Yeah. I mean, I even remember when this came out, you know, it was like Richard Franklin is a devotee of Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah. I mean, when you watch this movie, it's like this is a guy who really like Knows understands. It. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, because I guess at the time, you know, you'd think like Brian De Palma was the mm-hmm. Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, right. Uh, okay. <laughs> he did homages. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, how do we say this? <laughs> right. But Franklin <laughs> actually boy? seems like he's a big, a, also 100%. a big fanboy. Yeah. And, and there's there's actually a scene in this, and I didn't see it when we were watching, but it, there's a scene that they there is an Alfred Hitchcock silhouette in yeah, the background. Yeah, somebody me about that too. Oh, I, I didn't I catch it. it. I looked for it. I didn't catch oh, it. Yeah. It's like when they first go into the house and, and with uh, Norman and Mary, like in the parlor or whatever, it's supposedly there somewhere, but I didn't see it. Interesting. Yeah, because he was so famous. Yeah. I think because the he, he the appeared. Show. Yeah, the Alfred Hitchcock, Alfred Hitchcock presents. presents. I mean, he was well known what he looked da, 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 like and what he sounded like, and you know, I mean, evening. yeah, yeah. And like I said, they when this script came about, they took it to Hitchcock's daughter to get her like seal of approval, and she was like, "My dad would love this script." Oh, good. Yeah, that makes me happy. But I know. And that's what I'm saying. I don't think Tom Holland gets enough credit because like when the the screenplay to this is extremely reverential. Mm-hmm. I think to the original yeah. Psycho, it's like. You know, clearly he understood the assignment and was the best guy for the the job. Yeah. Although mm-hmm. Franklin's given the credit for like making, you know, a studious yeah. Alfred Hitchcock continuation. And we have Which, to name one more person in that triumvirate who shot this movie. Oh, Uh-oh. Dean Cundy. Oh, Dean Cundy, yeah. This movie. Who shot every impactful movie that's ever crossed your like <laughs> life? You know, like, basically. Yeah, but, but they run in some powerhouses. Yeah, <laughs> right. But look at the look at the camera shots in this. Like it is, uh, it, like you said, if Richard Franklin and Tom Holland, uh, you know, were reverential to and everything, so was Dean Cundy. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've talk, yeah. there must have been tons of conversations with uh, between Cundy and Richard Franklin about shot selection and setup and everything because he's doing shots from psycho yeah in this and there are shots that feel like alfred hitchcock yes. would have designed them that oh, way yes. Yes. like 100%. if alfred hitchcock had a crane yes you know, yeah. <laughs> he would have done that shot you know yeah. there's it was, a lot of and it was very close to getting a completely different movie because initially um this was going to be a made for tv movie Mm-hmm. And Anthony Perkins was like, fuck that. I'm not doing it. And then he read the script. He's like, oh, this is good. And so he agreed to come on. And then it ended up being a, a studio movie. Well, that's yeah. like a story in itself, too, because yeah. like Anthony Perkins hated, hated being associated with Norman Bates yeah. for yeah. most of his career. I imagine it would suck. Any Anytime you out in public, people are saying shit to you anytime yeah. right. like and, like yeah. you said he looks distinct there's no mistaking him for someone else right it's so true. yeah i, mean, I imagine well, like, that about, was not fun think about the harassment that he gets in this movie that's his life yeah exactly <laughs> right? like, so exactly. i'm wondering because this is uh 22 years after the original i mean obviously he between the script and what have you um he must have come to terms with yeah, it yeah i think so um yeah. made well, peace with it I at mean, some point yeah and honestly like he must have because he went on to do two more movies and directed the third one. The third one. Yeah. yeah. So he directed two movies, I think. The other one I have seen. It's called Lucky Stiff. It is not very. Oh, good. he did that. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> I want to say he did two, but he did Psycho Three was his yeah. directorial debut. Yep. But yeah, I think it's just you know, um, you know, when I was growing up, Anthony Perkins was Norman Bates, and yep, you know, Psycho Two had happened when I was very young. And then every movie that pretty much he was in after that were schlocky horror movies yeah. that were capitalizing on the fact that they had the guy from Psycho in yep. it, you know. Mm-hmm. Although he was in the black hole like right before this, I think, right? What's the black hole? The, the Disney uh, oh, Star Wars. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> <knock off. laughs> yeah. Um, Richard Franklin, though, uh, had done other stuff that uh, I don't think we brought. No, he did. The- he did Cloak and Dagger. Uh, yep. Sorrento. Well, Tom FX2. Holland also wrote. Link was another one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Link, the. Uh, Link yeah. is a. 
That's been on my list for a while. I was like, that was uh, yeah. that one's oh, a yeah. potential freak show movie. And he had <laughs> done. Uh, he's an Australian. Orangutan is spray painted to look like a missing link monkey. Yeah. And Elizabeth shoes. Yeah. 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 It's it's uh, definitely you know, freak show yeah. material. Yeah. 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 And it just came out, I think, on physical. Yeah. Uh, it is. And I think yeah. that's why it's been on my list for as long as yeah. there was no way to watch it until oh. recently. Oh. Now it's out. So maybe it'll have to come soon. Are you looking it up now? Stay tuned. I looked at the the poster. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a good poster. Elizabeth Shue. Um, he also did Road Games in the Blue Lagoon. Did Richard Franklin. He did the Blue Lagoon? The Blue Lagoon. Oh, shit, I Richard didn't know Franklin that. Richard Franklin did the Blue Lagoon? I, just, I thought that was yeah. Richard Fleischer. No, nope, Richard Franklin. Franklin. Hmm. What? Wait, no. Wait, what am I... Why is it on? I was like... A, hmm. Oh, no, he didn't he direct did. it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There he wrote go. it. Or produced it? Produced oh, it. I'm okay, sorry, okay, I'm looking okay. at the wrong okay. yeah. fucking line of I know. things. Road Games but he did direct Road Games. is a Hitchcockian movie that yeah. we probably should bring at some point with Stacey yes. Keach and yes. Jamie, Jamie Lee Curtis. Lee Curtis. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I've that's been on my that's list, on my list too. too. Yep. And before yeah. that, he did the movie Patrick. Anybody Patrick? That is on my list too. And um, so I've started adding notes to my list so that I know what the movie is. That's I'm, a good idea. And I'm pretty sure <laughs> that one says Telekinetic Coma Boy. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it was remade. It was remade like 10 years ago. Too, I'm, but I'm gonna, at a certain point, I'm going to need you to read off all <laughs> yeah. of those little notes. <laughs> yeah. They're as good as telekinetic. Yeah. Yeah. Whoopi, telekinetic coma boy, because he's he's in a coma, but yeah. he's like contro- making things happen with Ooh, his brain from fantastic. his coma. Yep. But like he from a movie, infatuated with a nurse. Yeah, but yeah. from the title, Patrick, you wouldn't know what the no. fuck right. that's about. No. So you know, it's not yeah. a good title. So interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I guess you know, it's like when you contextualize like how we got to Psycho Two. Yeah, I mean. You go through Halloween, right? Mm-hmm. But you still go back to the great granddaddy, yeah, which right. is Psycho, right? Yeah. But it's like, so John Carpenter casts uh, um, um, Janet Lee's daughter. Yep. Which she, they wanted her for this. They thought it would be a good homage to her mother. Um, but she had just done a comedy and she was like, the comedy's working. I kind of want to like places. trading places. She was getting out of yeah. the screen. She was like, queen. I'm getting out of it. So she, she right. declined. But mm-hmm. I think that would have been cool if she had been in it. But mm-hmm. anyway. She went legit. I mean, she probably wouldn't have done both. But I mean, you, you had yeah. Dean Cundy come over from mm-hmm. Halloween. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, Halloween owes a great debt to Psycho. We were saying even the yep. sound of the stabbing. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. The, sound <laughs> of the, yeah. Stabbing is the, the same. melon, you when know. Jim Myers gets stabbed. It mm-hmm. is the same sound. And I think the other thing that um, gave them the want to do it was uh, the rise of the slasher movie. I mean, yeah. I guess yeah. that's the thing. When you watch this today, it's like, okay. There's moments of like um, gore, mm-hmm. you know, or uh, graphic violence that you're like, okay, that wouldn't have been in in a, in no. a Hitchcock thing, right. but that's because they were trying to be contemporary and keep yeah. up with the uh, Halloween Friday. Which the 13th I mean, it, honestly, it was a nice surprise because watching it and you still get that Hitchcock flavor, and then when the moment happens, you're like, like, oh, oh. It's like shocking, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's, no, it's they good. went further yeah. than I thought yeah. they were gonna go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a nice little effect. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's good because a little goes a long way. Then it does. Yeah, yeah. nice. You're not overkilling yeah. it, and it just it, it just gives <laughs> you're like, a little. Oh, <laughs> you really? Oh, like oh, you're, oh, oh okay, my. that's great. Stabbed in the face. <laughs> <laughs> so I like the fact that uh, the Holly you hadn't. Seen I had this not before. seen this. I like I knew nothing about this movie. And as it was playing, listening to your reactions, I was like, oh, this actually does seem to be working the way they intended it. Yeah. To. <laughs> <laughs> to, to come off right because I, I, at a certain point i turned over to colin i was like they don't know because <laughs> watching it again this time just oh watching, yeah we're gonna spoil this yeah. oh yeah we're gonna spoil oh, the show yes, this but watching and watching the mary character from the beginning yeah, and just yeah, keeping yeah, an eye yeah, on yeah, her yeah. to be like well you're right. watching everybody yeah. going yeah. like yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. see what you're doing yeah <laughs> like the actors are doing they are playing fair yeah oh yeah i think mm-hmm. yeah i think so too um so it's 22 years later, and Norman Bates is coming home. Yeah. yeah. Is this the first of its kind, like, direct legacy sequel, like, many years later? You know, like, because we this do this all the time now, later? right? I mean, 22 years, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. That's I mean, instead of doing a reboot, which is what we would do now, yeah, they right. were doing remakes of, you know, uh, 60s movies in the 80s. Right. But, um, like, a direct, like, same characters picking up. 20 years in their real time late, like mm-hmm. Halloween and Halloween 2018 like is this the first instance right. of that it's got to be one you of the, one of the earliest one of the most ones, significant right? I would say especially with that time gap especially mm-hmm. from when the time gap was from 1960 right. to mm-hmm. the yeah, 80s the yeah, other one that one. I think of but it came later it was uh, the color of money 
uh, oh, with the Scorsese and, movie yeah, yeah, yeah. with Paul Newman because that was a sequel to The Hustler. The Hustler and, yeah. and now with Beetlejuice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 20, 20 some odd years yeah. later. Yeah. Well, I, I'd rather they did that than, than a remake. Oh, 100%. But, yeah. yeah. Which I still haven't seen it. Yeah. But some of them, it. I guess yeah. that's the thing when you go in with a sequel, it's like you somehow have to justify your existence beyond being a money grab. You should. Yeah. You yeah. should. You don't have to. And we've seen plenty that don't. Mm -hmm. But you should. But. I mean, now that you've seen this, is it, is it, does it, does it reek of being a, I mean, obviously it was, they were like, mm -hmm. there's slasher movies happening and everybody's talking That's about always an Psycho element. inspiring them. We should make a sequel to Psycho. No, <laughs> that, no one, no one know. is, uh, uh, uh. Pious when it comes to this, like uh, that's always part of it. Money. It's just like there's a, there's a name to it. It's Alfred Hitchcock. It's Psycho. It's one of the most famous movies ever made by one of the most famous directors ever made. If we make a sequel to it, we'll make a little change. It's always going to be part of it. But it doesn't feel like it, or it doesn't smell like it, as you say, like a, just a cash grab. But why? I mean, because I was trying to pin that down. It's so respectful to the source material. Yeah, it's not exploitative of it at all. Absolutely. I like think it's, this is it's, like the best you can hope for yeah, in like a probably. twenty years later. Sequel. It's made by people who are respecting the original. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this seems like it's you, directed, written. It's all people that respect the original, and then obviously and Anthony Perkins comes back. I yeah. think and that, yeah, I think the setup for him coming back it makes the most logical sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of a movie like this. Absolutely. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, like okay, yeah, twenty it, years later, he's released. That makes sense. Yeah, right. it's like yeah. he has been restored to sanity, as they right. say. Yeah. But right, and because because the story makes sense, it's not some wild thing that gets us back into oh, Michael. Oh, somehow Palpatine has returned. You know, yeah, it's, exactly. not, yeah, 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 it's not yeah. that shit. It's yeah. a story that makes sense for yeah. the character. There's no Sartain like driving him to the Bates Motel. Right, 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 you know, right, like right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. I mean, I will say some people are a little too lenient with him easing back into society. <laughs> True, but they also can't do anything about it so yeah. you know they have no legal like, recourse well, we here. wish that we had someone to like check up on you but we don't, but we don't. so yeah. <laughs> like, uh, good luck yep. <laughs> <laughs> budget cuts you I know. know i also do wonder about what what uh the ownership and the legality of of the hotel and the house of like who would own it if the only surviving heir is no longer there they said the state was the a, like hired uh dennis franz to run the yeah. Yeah. Right. so i assume so they like, own it or, they, or, yeah or they're just they're holding on to it. Of yeah. it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but like uh, oh this is like i guess a question for a lawyer but like if you get like put on death row or whatever don't you kind of lose all your property? I mean, he wasn't on death row, I guess, but like, what are the legalities around the commodities yeah. you own when you go to prison for a long time? Right. Well, I think How does you, that work? You, you have to, you know, and I think probably in Norman Bates's real world case, like mm -hmm. the, it would have been liquidated to like pay. Your, your assets are surrendered to the victims. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, right, right. But in this magical world, <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood, the hotel is still standing. Yes. Hotel Out there in the middle. I, I mean, not a lot of dust for 22 years. Pretty clean, honestly. Like yeah. those teenagers that have been breaking in to get high have been keeping the place nice. Well, they said there had been tenants, I guess, over yeah. the years. Somebody had been living in there, and the hotel is still running. And Dennis Franz, Dennis Franz is running it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a that reminds bag. Me. Oh, Dennis Franz. We're putting Dennis Franz oh, on shit. Yeah. 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 Of fame. Did we do all of NYPD? I was, like, I was like, that's all uh, I can uh, think uh, of when I see City him. of Angels. Can we put his naked ass on the wall? <laughs> oh, it's in there. God. That's right. Sipowitz. Remember Sipowitz from NYPD Sipowitz. Blue. But uh, so he's <laughs> D Brian De Palma movies. Ah, uh, okay. That makes sense. What so Jurassic we watched, Kill? Yes. Okay. Oh, and that's right. He was also in Body Double. Body I was going to say, Actually, yeah. No. Uh, we have one more inductee to the Hallway of Fame, and that's Lee Garlington. Uh, she played Myrna, the other uh, waitress. The waitress. Mm -hmm. uh, you recognize her because I, she was... What was she in? She was in Cobra. Oh, was she? <laughs> oh, my God. She was the Night Stalker's right-hand woman. Oh. Oh, in shit. Cobra. Like in the axis. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, she was also apparently in Hell Comes to Frogtown. Oh, of course. Okay. Classic. As a, a briefing officer. Right. <laughs> Dennis Franz is a spice that needs to be used in a specific <laughs> way. And, I mean, he steals scenes in a way that is really entertaining, but mm -hmm. you got to know when to use them and when to be like, okay, then uh, that's enough. Right. Like, yeah. When to deploy the fronds. Yes. yes. <laughs> deploy the fronds. He makes things dark really quickly. Like he, he can does. make things turn sleazy yeah. and he's dark real, real fast. Yeah. yeah, he's real good at that. But, but I enjoy even, it. I enjoy it. He's oh, a yeah, good character yeah. actor. Like even when De Palma used him, because I think about like his role, what is he, the private detective or the photographer or whatever in, uh, in yeah. Dress to Kill, mm -hmm. right? He's like sleazy 
And then at the end, it's like he is actually like, oh, I was in on this the whole time and blah, blah, blah. And you were doing this and going, you know, he has that. He's like, um, not Bud Court. Who's Paulie in, uh, in Rocky? Oh. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, my yep. God. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I never remember his name. Yep. But yeah. he also yeah, yeah, is yeah. like a guy that you're like, does he have a normal? Is this what he's like in real life? Right. Dennis Franz kind of feels like that. But then you see him in like NYT PD Blue or City of Angels. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, oh, there's a, you know, he's not as sleazy as he comes no. off in, in the movies. He's a very nice man. Burt Young. Burt Young, Young. Damn it. I'm sorry, Burt. I forgot your name. We all forgot your name. Um, we did. Okay, so you are tasked with, as a writer, you're going to come up with a sequel to Psycho. There's a good starting point is, okay, he's being released. You are not doing, you know, it's like, okay, well, you have to start off with the shower scene, right? Don't you? Previously on Psycho, yeah. 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 I mean, it's is been that- been 22 years to remind people. Of just the most iconic scene in horror history, you know? <laughs> right, right. I think but that's what, it. What, what, better way, what, a be, what better way to start? Your sequel. Yeah. Give them the best, I I want to say the best moment, but the most memorable moment. The most memorable moment from like any movie ever, almost. I mean, like it's one of the the shower scene. Mm -hmm. Infamy. Yeah. And then um, I, uh, then it's off to court, right? And uh, Anthony Perkins is returning and his performance in this, like, what do you think of, of Anthony Perkins in Psycho 2? I like him. I, he, he, I think he toes. I mean, you obviously know what the character is capable of because you're going in to a sequel. But I think he does a good job of towing that line of like, is this guy weird in a harmless way or not? Right? Is you he? Know? Is he okay? Yeah. Because they say his sanity has been restored, but mm-hmm. has it? Because we've all and- had that weird coworker that were like. Should I be playing along with this or no? Like, is this dangerous right. to keep indulging this? You know. Yeah. Um, uh, and 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 plus that, I mean, that question will permeate the rest of the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is, is a good is idea. Okay? It yeah. is yes, because you I'm, want that tension it is already built in right off the bat. I guess that's the thing, right? You go into this movie, and you're like, okay, he's out. It's called Psycho Two. He's going back to the hotel pretty soon. You know. Uh, he's going to be talking to mother again. Right, <laughs> you know? it's a powder keg. You know, it's just going <laughs> to explode at some point. But when, you know, I yeah. think this is what the, the the subsequent sequels don't have. It's that kind of like, you know, is he or is he not? Like, you know, yeah. Because mm-hmm. I'll, I'll bet everything after this is just straight. Okay, he's nuts. We know this. Mm-hmm. What yeah. happens from there? Yeah. I, I like this question. You're just like ah, because you're not. Because obviously, it's different from the first one. Um, and you know, uh. Uh, I forgot where I was going with it. Well, it's like inverting the first one, I suppose, mm-hmm. right? I mean, I remember, you know, I mean, obviously, we've all seen Psycho so many times. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like a built in to us that we know that Norman Bates is right, his yeah. mother. Right. Yeah. Right. But uh, I had an opportunity to see Psycho with uh, former freak show host Tom Keene, who oh. didn't know that. Wow! Oh. How did you escape? I, I know it was wow. Tom didn't okay. like horror movies, right? And it, because it, like, way back in the day, but I don't know if you guys know this, but culture so I, much. Colin, no. <laughs> and Colin was so distraught at the idea that Tom didn't know yeah. this much about horror movies that you took him through the history, the history of, of horror, horror movies. movies. They would sit down here and watch movies, yeah, to educate features. Tom. And we like went through, and so we did Psycho and Psycho Two, but and both movies worked like amazing, and it was cool to see it from someone who didn't know and you're like this must have been what it was like to, right? You know, right the first time were you because, just watching him you're like i'll never experience this what are yeah, you feeling right he, now he totally thought that like you know it's like there's this poor guy and his mm-hmm. fucking crazy mother <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> that is that amazing is how the movie was supposed to play yeah you know like and it did to audiences years yeah. and years ago this yep. is oh wow well i also yeah. thought about that when the gus van zandt remake came out i'm like who the, what the who the fuck is this for like everybody knows Right? right, but then yeah. it turned out they didn't. <laughs> it was like a new thing to a bunch of a generation of of film goers. It's always somebody who hasn't seen it. Something. So this one, you go in going like Norman's a crazy bastard and yeah. he's killing so it's people. Just, it's just like watching all these people just nonchalantly put him in triggering situations. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. They test his boundaries immediately as soon as he's out. They're like, well, welcome home. See ya. Yep. <laughs> So they're walking up to the it. house Welcome and they're like, there's somebody in the window. It's like, oh, Jesus, we're starting already. <laughs> right? <laughs> you guys, you guys, just, you sure he's good? I don't think he's good. Like, maybe you shouldn't leave him. Just right. say Let's it. Let's take him back to the house. 
<laughs> that was a, probably a bad idea. I mean, <laughs> you know, this is I where he so. killed your mother. Uh, the hotels where he killed a couple of guests. I know you don't remember that. <laughs> well, I'm assuming that he does now, right? They've integrated his personality. Well, they said yeah. they got rid of all of it. I don't know what that means. Like, if he, he can't access that. it, he can only access the toasted cheese sandwiches, as he says. Yeah, that, I thought that was a good scene. It's a, it's a, it, the, the, he, he's the pathos yeah. of the character, mm-hmm. right? It's like he can't remember anything of those moments because the doctors took them all away. Yeah. You know, to make he's him better. Blacked out. Yeah. 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 He was mother. Um, but he knows that his mother is dead, right? Well, and so he starts off that way. <laughs> At first. <laughs> At first. He has a strong feeling she's dead. So what are the stressors that we're going to pile upon this character? Because, I mean, that's going to be what the movie is going to do, right? It's yeah. like, you know, is he losing his grip or not? And so what, yeah, how are we going to, how's the screenplay going to stress his psyche? Mm-hmm. Well, first it sends him back to the house in the hotel. That's mm-hmm. stressor number one. Right. He's got a doctor looking after him, and that's Robert uh, Loja. Yeah, Robert Loja. Yeah. Good casting. Yeah. Great show icon. Love it. Always yeah. good. Always Love good. him. Um, he starts. What, do the notes start first? Is this what he first? Yes, because he finds a note under the phone when he first gets home. Yes, from mother. From mother. From, mother. from yeah. M. And then we're like, well, maybe that's but an it could old be old. Yes, yeah, yeah. under the phone. Yeah, because there's some other things in the house that have been left there. The uh, the coffee or the tea that he, yeah. uh, you know, the poison, the poison still there, tea, yeah. and the butcher knife is sure, still there. Sure. You know, these are kind of triggering things for him. Yep. It feels like a video game where you'd have to go in and get all these things to like progress the story. It's like you gotta find the knife that was used in the murder. Find the tea that was used <laughs> poison tea. Would you yep. like to save this for later? Yep. Yes, I would. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but I guess the shovel. Uh, <laughs> We'll come back for that later. Too heavy. So, yeah, too, yeah. yeah, too heavy. You do not have room in your pack. Yeah. Come back later. I just, um, I guess, I always thought that, like, he's, this is a better role for Anthony Perkins than the original Psycho. Am I crazy on that? He gets to do more. He gets to do more, yeah. Yeah. yeah more nuance. So. Mm-hmm. A little more nuance, a little more bewilderment. Mm-hmm. Um, he's very good at being bewildered and having, I can, I can just s- the looks on his faces are, there because, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, funny sometimes because just he just has that look where he's just like i don't know what's going on well, i'm very confused yeah well like i said he he originally didn't want to do this when he heard about it being like original like a made for tv movie mm. but then when he read the script he was like oh no i want to do this I was like i can see why he yeah. wanted to do this it gives him things to explore yeah he, yeah yeah it's stuff that he didn't get to do the first time yeah. around right and he gets to play the um a conflicted character the entire time he's yeah. always working against something or something's always working against him that he's kind of got to yeah. show in you his can, acting. You, you can see, like you, in his physicality, you see his struggle. Yes. Yeah. You really do. In those, in those square, square shoulders. Oh, you can so see square. that tension. So square. So square. This, this guy has a swimmer's body. It's, yeah. It's just like he's built like an alien. So if he wasn't fucked with, would Norman have been okay? Probably. I, I think, think he would have so. been okay for a lot longer than he was in this movie. <laughs> You know, I in, think. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh no, uh, I think he would have gotten there eventually. Go ahead. Uh, you know, when Halloween Kills, where they said she taunted a man with brain damage. <laughs> that's what this whole town's. Wow. That, that, that's actually happening in this movie. Yeah, like true. this whole town's <laughs> literally yelling yeah. "psycho" at him while he's walking on the street. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, who are these people that they are living with a like freed serial killer and they're going to go poke this bear? Like, I'm right. sorry. <laughs> uh, I would be the, like so nice to this person if I had to interact uh, with them on a daily basis. I'd be nice or I'd me? leave. Yeah, exactly. Last thing I'd do is going to their house and throwing shit at it and calling them a psycho. Like, yeah. you're asking for it. I don't okay, feel bad for you. Okay, but who are those people, I guess? Well, Dennis Franz is one okay. of them. Yeah. But yeah, he has a motive. Major antagonist. He does have a motive. Yeah. He gets fired. He gets yeah, fired, but still, yeah. you know, with it, everyone knows the story, and yet they still make these choices. That's what's insane. Like... Yeah, poke the guy who killed some people. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Vera Miles. Mm-hmm. Returns. Returns. Right. Yeah. Which is great. As um uh, what's her name? Lila Lila, Lila. Loomis. Lila time. Loomis. Formerly Lila Crane, right? Yeah. So she's a sister of Marion Crane who died in the shower. Mm-hmm. And uh Sam Loomis. Mm-hmm. I gotcha. <laughs> it has passed on, so they the didn't have same. to bring I can't remember if that actor was alive or dead mm-hmm. at the Ooh. point when they made this movie. Um, but she's back and she's like 
he needs to be recommitted. Right. She's the one who comes every year to the to the what you might call it parole mm-hmm. meeting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, don't let him out. Yep. Yeah, she's mm-hmm. got 170 740 740 signatures on a petition to keep him locked up, but the state has said he's good, and yep. they give him a job at a uh, diner. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, maybe well, handling knives is in a best job for maybe. this person. Yeah, but he's, 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 f- he's fine now. He's, fine. he's, he's been proven <laughs> to be sane. I'm just saying, even if someone is fine, you shouldn't like. I mean, test. I wouldn't. It wouldn't be the first thing I hand someone yeah. who comes out of the hospital. You should maybe ease them into it a little bit more. You <laughs> yeah, know? No, there's like, no easing yeah. with this. Go to the house. Grab that knife. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. <laughs> well, at the diner, he meets uh, Meg M- Tilly. Mary. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right, playing Mary Samuels, mm-hmm. which I yeah, guess sounds seen that one like yeah. Marion Crane and Sam Loomis, and yeah, we probably should have seen that coming. That sounds, like, right. sounds like Will Benson. <laughs> right. did last ben summer. Son. Ben Son. This was like, oh. Mm-hmm. I didn't see it coming. <laughs> you didn't see this coming? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, I forgot. Mm-hmm. You haven't yeah. seen this. No, I thought she was just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Very she stupid, right? That way. Yeah. yeah. I was like, this yeah. girl's an idiot. Right. So, <laughs> just like, why, right. Because you, you, first time watching, you're like, why are you poking at this so much? It's like, why do you want to go into this room so much? Why do you want to explore all this shit so much? Like, leave it the fuck alone. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I think it's believable because of her, her, um, conversations with her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this girl really is stupid. Mm -hmm. Just listening to her, like talk to her fake boyfriend. I believed it. Oh, oh, I said, I mean, I was like, we've, all had that coworker that's yeah. always on the phone arguing with her boyfriend at work mm-hmm. and like then you have to hear about it and she's never doing her job because she's always on her phone right, she yeah, plays yeah. that part very well yeah, yeah. very well like, yeah. yeah I understand that everyone that keeps bitching at her it's like yeah. go do some work yeah yeah, yeah. right <laughs> I Wait, understand I just, and I'm like okay. how long has she been working there four days, four days. she said yeah, four, days. four days and she said she's broke a dozen plates in four days okay that is a problem that's a problem mm-hmm. you're breaking three plates a day like you need to yeah, yeah you, you have to keep this job yeah. to keep your cover right right I'm assuming she took the job to be in the town to be She's close. She's drawing a lot of attention to herself. So this is, yeah. I guess, the spoilers. This is the spoiler of the the movie. But this is the the kind of a, a reveal later. Like mm-hmm. they have a friendship. Uh, she mm-hmm. befriends Norman because he basically um, offers to let her stay at the motel. Yeah. yeah. Right. Which we sit there as the audience going like, oh, Norman's got somebody coming back to the motel. But it actually turns out to be like a decent, you know, genuine right. friendship. It, it feels like. Because he hesitates to grab key number one. Yeah. <laughs> no. That's right. He's not going to put seven. her in the first <laughs> no. number one. Um, I love the see, little, it's little things like that because those happen throughout the movie. Yeah, yeah, but those are like the callbacks that I sit there in. Like newer movies, mm. when they do that kind of like right. naked callbacks to it. right, and we have a pro- I, I agree, I uh, mm-hmm. have a problem with it. Most why of the didn't time. you have a problem in this? Be- I mean, I guess it's because you're back in the, this is like going back to the Overlook Hotel or yeah. something, right? It's a it's an iconic cinematic place, right? Mm-hmm. Because Bates Motel, I'll say because it makes sense. Because he do- would, yeah. Because it, yeah. it makes sense for the story and the moment those yeah. characters mm-hmm. are in, like he would. Think of it because he again he's been gone for twenty two years and he's back at this and I mean just habit of being back there he'd reach for that one yeah but just to see him because it it adds to his struggle and it adds to that character and it works it doesn't always do that with the well like we said the naked callbacks and Easter quote unquote Easter eggs I mean there's a, there's a spectrum to it right yeah. like yeah. I would say Doctor Sleep is on the good end of the spectrum right? I need to watch this movie for yeah. as much as you bring you it do up. need to watch, I mean it's a sequel it's on my to, list I'll watch it soon. The Shining do, uh, and it's well, Flanagan well, yeah it's Mike Flanagan I, Mike Flanagan. I didn't exactly like The Shining I have to watch that again too I have to do a lot of work to get to Doctor <laughs> Sleep is what I'm saying <laughs> but, okay. I'm, but I'm just saying it's here nor there but Doctor Sleep had to work the balance of adapting a book and being faithful to yep. Stanley Kubrick's movie at the same time, which are Hard two things job. that are at odds yeah. with each other. Yeah, um, yeah, because there's no Overlook Hotel. No, exactly. So he's <laughs> he and only down. Mike Flanagan yeah. could pull it off. Um, but that movie doesn't feel like member berries. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But then you on the opposite end, you have what like the Halloween ends, the Halloween kills of it all, really where it's just lean like lean into or, it. Yeah. And maybe yeah. in the middle is like Alien Romulus. I don't know. Alien Romulus is definitely towards the bad end of the spectrum, in my opinion, yeah. because it is like the greatest hits. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's it's when it just feels like a cash grab and it isn't it doesn't serve a narrative purpose, I yes. guess. Yeah, they get know? away from yeah. her, you yeah. bitch, and all that. But yeah, the, yeah. Like this, yes. this Some feels like shit. him yeah. reaching for you know room number one, the key to room number one, yeah. and then deciding against. Yeah. It's, it's a good moment, right. and it doesn't feel it. It feels like a logical thing, I guess, to yeah. happen. Um, so th- these two end up in the house mm-hmm. 
Norman starts receiving phone calls from mother. But I like the progression of the phone calls from mother throughout this entire movie. The first time, he's like, my mother's dead. And whoever you are, this is, you know. Mm -hmm. And then he thinks that, uh, you know, the motel man, Dennis Franz, is calling him. You You know, later, there's a great moment. When he gets a phone call from mother and like the, the music, the music is like, hello, mother. You know I mean? Mm-hmm. Just he changes his, yeah. the phone he from shifts. one year to the, yeah. you know, yeah. and it's like, oh, he's, this is, he. there goes <laughs> Norman. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's like, that's like Sydney getting the phone call. The hello, Sydney. Like, yeah. It's like, it's almost like yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, what is it that pushes Norman off the deep end? Plot wise, how do we get there? What's There's the thing that? Things. What's the thing that did it? Well, well this, I mean, this whole movie is the build up to that. Yeah. There's um, so there's there's well, the does he one, go off the deep end? I mean, he does a little bit, but does he like go off the deep yeah, end? You know what I mean? He eventually does. Eventually, and does. I think there's a moment, and it is a phone call yeah. where that happens. I think he, you know, because first of all, there's a murder that happens, and it is the um, it's the Dennis Franz character. Yes. Mm-hmm. Is killed by what looks like a tall woman in black with a butcher knife. It mm-hmm. is mother. Yeah. So you're like whoever yeah. that is, we yeah. don't know. Uh, like that is Norman, yeah. you know. Uh, it's, it's ghost and it's, face. And it's because what? it's ghost face. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And it's because <laughs> Dennis Franz has been needling Norman, mm-hmm. right? Um, yeah, but I mean, yeah, because we didn't go over. Norman fires him because it's basically turned his motel into a drug motel. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's just a cheap. <laughs> well, no, yeah. wait, what does he call it? An adult. Motel. An adult motel. <laughs> yeah. I think what they call an adult motel. Yeah. Just drugs and whoring. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wow, you have been locked up for a while. It's like, bro, it's a motel, not a hotel. Yeah. Everyone yeah. knows the motel means something different. Yeah. You know, you can drive up to your door. You right, problem. exactly. But the not to him. Not to no. Him. What's his lifeblood? Well, the thing about the Dennis Franz murder, and I think by the end of the movie, we know who killed him, mm-hmm. uh, because uh, uh, there's a scene in the diner which basically lets uh. this person know that, <laughs> yes. that Dennis Franz is... Uh, uh, fucking with him. Fucking and, with and just, a, just a bad dude. Yeah. Yeah, he's But slimy. nobody else knows about that death. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. But then there's a second murder that takes place in the basement. The young boy. Right, because kids are breaking into the house to get high and fuck. Yeah. yeah. And that one Good brings the police, and that's them. when the screws really start to tighten. I think there's a scene where Norman goes into his mother's bedroom, mm-hmm. and yes. the whole place oh, has been yeah. Cause mother's, restored. Everything had been like you know covered with the sheets and all yep. like rolled up and everything, but he walks in and everything is back in place where it used to be. Yeah. Yeah, all laid out and everything. Mm-hmm. There you go. And is- there's there's a note on her bureau, on her dresser or whatever. Yeah, yeah. don't let that slut back into my house. I'll kill her. Something yeah. like that. I, yeah, you know, logically you think like, well, shouldn't Mother or Norman know his mother's handwriting? But I suppose at the time you're thinking maybe he wrote it himself as right. Mother. Yeah. yeah. You know? Um, I mean, that's what they're trying to get you to think. Right. Yeah. yeah. These are the questions we're asking yeah. why we're watching. Like, like is well, it him? Is it someone else? Yeah. yeah. Is it Mother? And I guess, so there's several times when he seems to see something that the movie conveniently makes, there's no evidence of it to prove that he saw what he thinks he saw. Yeah, and there's lots of little moments that, like, the movie sets it up to show you that maybe there is someone else in the house. Like there's a lot of little moments with like the peephole in the bathroom yep. when Mary runs out and he's already downstairs. So we know and it's it can't like we be know him. it can't be him. Yeah. Like he would not have get, gotten downstairs that quickly. So we know there's something or someone else there. Yeah. And we and, and a, a lot of information is getting revealed because at a certain point when it was about midway, maybe a little past that, it's it's revealed that Mary is the daughter of Lila. She's a Loomis mm-hmm. and that they are working together. So we know this information, and and so, but we're still questioning it because then uh, it becomes like a little haunted house movie where you know we, uh, we see one character in the bathroom with an eyeball, but the other character is downstairs. But then Mary disappears, and then then we see uh, Norma, we see Mother right. again, but then Norman's missing or comes up. It, it's quite convenient. There's a back stairway in this house. It really helps <laughs> with the uh, 
sneaking around portion of it. But, yeah, I, but, but I like this. It's very effective because it really does make you think like, okay, is he going crazy? Right. Are or are, crazy are, are they just making him think he's going crazy? Like, it's very effective. Right. Because at this point, like, I genuinely didn't know. Well, I yeah. guess you didn't, but you don't know that they're like, it seems like he's going crazy. For most of the movie, right. right? You're like, okay, he must have killed, you know, because right. somebody killed Dennis Franz. The thing with the kid in the basement is like he gets locked in an attic room, right. which you're like, yeah. okay, but is this an unreliable narrator? He is because he's psycho, right? He, exactly. Like, so, That's why it's so effective. Yeah. Yeah. Because the door is later unlocked, but also you, you do get certain shots of mother when this is going on where you're just like, That's a woman. Mm. Like just arms don't look like, and plus, he, like I said, he's built a very specific way. Yeah, you, but, you might. Notice, and when but, when the when the teenagers see her in the cellar, that's very clearly a woman. Yeah, that's the point. Where yeah, I'm saying, all right, that's a woman. So yeah, who are they there. seeing? Right. There, yeah. But there were other points where I'm like, did they get him to dress up as? I think. I think so. Now, I think so. I'll bet they yeah. did. I think mother kept cha- like the look of mother changed. If they're yes. smart, that's what they did. <laughs> so it's like yeah. based on how they shot the shower scene. I think wasn't that different people and and yeah yeah. yeah yeah but I think when you're seeing because there was a time where I'm like that's Meg Tilly you know after the fact right. I'm like that yes. was her in the window mm-hmm. you know yeah. but it's later it's on a second viewing that you're actually trying to piece together which sighting is who right yeah. who's, yeah, who's who and at <laughs> and what when? point were they dressed up <coughs> at what point did yeah. they stop because again uh, characters um, uh, I mean Mary decides at one point to just stop. Well, she wants to stop fucking with him, but she had to. Yeah, before. but why? Why does she decide? Because I think it, she's it getting happens, to know him and she feels sorry for him. I think. Yeah, I mean, I think that's I, it. I, yeah, I think so. I think she feels guilty. She's like, we're f- torturing this guy. Right, like yeah. he's tried They're taunting a man with brain damage. Yes, they are. Yeah. And he's 100%. trying to be normal. He's yeah. trying. Yeah, he's to, trying to move on with his life. He's yeah. trying to recover. Like, he's and here we come in Ill. fucking with him as yeah. <laughs> They and couldn't wait for mob justice. They had to make it happen on their own, you know. Right. Like they. Get- <laughs> but this is all driven uh, by um, Lila's. I mean, need for obsession, justice. obsession, Re- her obsession revenge. for yeah. justice. Revenge. She's like, he killed yeah. my sister, yeah. you know, which is true. It's true, <laughs> yeah. you know, true. Twenty-two years distance or not, he killed my sister. Yep, but yeah. not guilty by reason of insanity, yep. so he can't be held responsible for the crime because technically. It, well, I mean, technically it was him. Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, well, yeah. but it's interesting because you do feel sympathy for that character up to a point, And then you're just like, okay. I think it's when it's revealed that, like, you know, uh, Lila is Mary's mom, mm-hmm. yep. you know, and they're like, you know, we're on the, you know, she's like so psychotically devoted to just destroying this yeah. guy yeah, she's like we're so close he's almost there i can hear it in his voice Because she doesn't even care i mean i i think that's when your your empathy kind of changes for yep. her it's like she doesn't even yeah. care that somebody may have been killed or yes. anything or you know if he didn't do it or not it's like but this well, is yeah. this is the moment we can get him but you right. gave him an alibi yep. i mean using your daughter for Baton's whole that's situation sick. is so yeah. fucked like, but mary's like been the- sitting there her whole life hearing about how this guy killed her you know, right, and she right. could go right. to all but the like, meetings and all the. If she truly believes he's this dangerous, putting her daughter in these situations is yeah. fucking yeah. insane. Yep. Like, yeah. yep. And I, I like. There's that moment that the sheriff it's makes the comment. Mm-hmm. The sheriff makes the comment. He's like, Norman Bates isn't the only crazy the person psycho? in this town. <laughs> it's not yeah. him. You it's know? her. Yeah. <laughs> That sheriff is great. That yes. sheriff's fantastic. <laughs> he's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love it. He's, he's perfectly where he's like, everyone's nuts in this town. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what does he say? He's like, we're all a little slow in this. We're going to be a little t- like, a tick slow in this town, but he's like, we're not my, incompetent. He's like, might yeah. be a little slow, but we're not incompetent. Right. Yeah. yeah. I love That's this That's a sheriff. good attitude to have. It's like, we're okay. We're not, you know, uh, uh, first yeah. on everything. But we get there. But they have to investigate this murder, but everything's been cleaned up. Norman has an alibi and it's at this point that like I would guess the big change happens in the movie where Mary becomes less like I guess she has sympathy and she's like I want to stop doing this to Norman but it's also at the point where Nor- Norman has been pushed so far that he's like it's starting again like I'm, I'm getting starting. confused again no, aren't confused I? Again, and she's huh? like no 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 and then <laughs> yeah he becomes more menacing more menacing more aggressive yeah, uh, yeah, especially at that point, which is like not letting her leave the room. It's just like well, Whoa. he thinks his mom's downstairs. He does. So who, who? Because he's like, you know, they split up because they think someone's in the house. You know, uh, because I think, like you said, there's, you know, there's somebody. It was looking through a peephole. Yes. 
and Norman was downstairs. So Mary's like, there's somebody else in the house. She's like, it's my mom. It's Lila. Mm -hmm. Right. And Norman goes to investigate and hears his mother calling to him from the, the cellar. So who was talking to him from the cellar? Do we reveal that now? <laughs> I mean, I, but, <laughs> but can we? Do we know for sure? I mean, I think based on the end of the movie, we do. I assume that's what it was because he comes back too. up and he's like, well, no. Well, he just well, says that his a, mother is not dead. Like, at, at this point. Well, because at, at this point, I wasn't sure if. Because I think they are driving him crazy. So yeah. is he hearing it or is it Lila pretending to be mom or is it the uh, mystery or, third party? The, yeah, right. Like, I th I, I'm like, I genuinely don't know which one it is. Right. And that's what you and that's what yeah. I think great about this, because you question that even right now, we still can't. There's no direct specific clear answer because it could be he could be hearing it just himself. Right. It could be the mystery third party. It could be Lila. At a certain point, it could have been Mary beforehand. I think it had to be the mystery third party I think so because too. he, after that point, has knowledge that, you know, uh, I think he tell because he's like, you know, my mother is not dead. And yes. we think he's talking about Mrs. Bates. Norma yeah. Bates. But he's not talking dead. about it, He's like, makes, you know, my real mother. I think he says. Because to, I was very confused by this because he's so confident at this point. Yes. And he's got that little smirk like he knows something that you don't know. No. And you think like, oh, he's just that he's just gone crazy. He's right. that crazy. But then you find out, no, really, he knows something you don't know. Like blew my mind. <laughs> yeah. So it all comes down to we've got a bunch of people converging on the house at the same time. We yes. and the noose is tightening, right? Mm -hmm. Like the police are finding uh, uh victims in the swamp. Yeah. Again, where they have found cars yep. of victims before. So that's happening again. Robert Loja is following around Lila Loomis. Because he's put it together that the, the two of them are trying to drive uh, uh, Norman insane. Yep. So he's on the trail of Lila and Mary. And I'm going to prove to you, Norman, that there's that scene I love when, you know, Norman's talking to him. It's just a great fucking performance, I think, by Anthony Perkins, you know, because he's like, it just the way that he answers, like, the questions is very calm. I yeah. mean, he is like a crazy person. Yes. Yeah. But that's <laughs> what makes it scary. Yeah. Is that when she's like, we need to get away, we need to run is it that part? No, Which the like one with the escape? with the with Robert Loja. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where okay, the, okay. He's like, so Mary Loomis has been doing this too. Mary and Lila, and then he like takes out his glasses and like, you know, yes. what if I was to tell you? And he puts them on, and I'm like, he's reminding him of his sessions that yes. they had yeah. in yes. the hospital yeah. just through that body language, which yep. I thought was good. But I like that Norman has to close the door so yes. mom doesn't hear mm -hmm. the conversation <laughs> yeah. that they're having. You know, um, yeah. <laughs> It's fantastic. Yeah. So all of these, so uh, Lila's gone to the house because she's like, all we got to do is dress up one more time and we're going to send him over the edge and he'll be committed. Yep. Uh, well, is, when is the moment that they find uh, the car in the swamp? I think it's like then, just before, right? Just before, just before that. Happens. Just before that, because Mary goes back to the house because she's like, I have to get Norman. We have to get out of here. Uh, I know right. he didn't do it. And that's yeah. the coals slowly just falling down right. in the corner. Hint, hint, I love hint, that. Hint. I love that. I love that. And then, well, because Lila, what, did, what like, does he say when the sheriff is like, um, "Don't like we want to find out who." What does he say that his response is like? Well, that'd be a load off my mind, or something like that. It's <laughs> right. such a great well, line. Right. What, what if, if I, I can prove to you <laughs> that Lila and Mary are oh, doing this? Oh, that's it. Would like, you accept it? I mean, I would. Yes. It's like then that's what I'll do. That'd well, be a load off my mind. That would be a load off my mind. <laughs> that's such a great <laughs> it's line. So good. He's just like not there. You <laughs> yeah. know, yeah. he's like not present in the. <laughs> so Lila goes to the house to dress up. And she's got the the mom get up in the cellar, but it turns out there is someone down there dressed as mother who plunges a butcher knife into her mouth. Mm -hmm. Loved it. <laughs> it comes Good out effect. the other side. Yeah, it is yeah. Gozer. I was not expecting that. Right. That and again, fantastic. shocking. Just yeah. like, oh, mm -hmm. she's yeah. gone. And so and though and so you're still going like, okay, was is that is that Norman? It's like what what what's happening? Is he killing people? Like mm -hmm. the, the questions still keep coming because it's not complete. We know he's he's going there, but is he dressing up and killing people? Well, he gets well at this point, my my logical mind was like, okay, that really couldn't have been Norman because he's not covered in soot when he comes downstairs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To put her in coals, he would have been dirty as fuck. Right. right. So it had to have been someone else. But it's mm -hmm. a movie, so you can't go by that. But there's the 
Mary tries to get him out of the house, but he gets a phone call, and we and the phone actually does ring, but yeah. it's Robert Loggia calling from the hotel. To the tell motel. him, like, yeah. this is where Lila's been calling you from. But like, he's still like, mother. But I yeah, hear you, he hears mom on the fo- our mother on the phone, and that's like uh, one of those great. You, you don't want me to have to kill her. And he's and just like looking a, at her, like the corner of his and, eye. And it's, oh, it's he, so right. great! It's great because it's and so great. at a certain point, when it starts getting more strange, they do the slow zoom in. They move into him, and you can see the sweat. Just yeah, he's the sweat. Oh on, god, it's so good. Just on his upper lip and on his head, and those side looks towards Mary yeah. and everything. It's great performance. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's calibrated because it's a different like stillness. Yes. Like his crazy Norman is very still, you know. Yeah. Where his he was a lot more animated at the beginning of the movie, mm-hmm. you know. Um, yeah, when you're carefree and don't have that tension. I think when they put him in the black sweater, that's when he, that's that's, <laughs> that's telling us this is crazy Norman. Okay, uh, <laughs> he answers yeah, he's the wearing door. That blue shirt most of the time. Yeah, and then he's in the black sweater, and it's he like, covers oh, it up. Okay. He's still wearing the blue shirt, but he covers it up with the black. The yeah. blackness covers mm-hmm. him. Yeah. So um, and Mary, then now afraid for her life. I love that scene where you know the camera like pull, pull, pulls up to the ceiling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know she's like, oh it's my really god, he is it's fucking crazy. Shot. It's a great moment. It's a great realization <laughs> where. Her character goes, I think, I, I think the events to her end, I, I think it's very believable for the situation they're in. And I think she gives a good performance in that when things start going wrong. And yeah. She's like, he is nuts. And what she does to try and prove, because first she goes, she's trying to disprove that mother's a lot. She, she dresses up as mother and she's like, I am your mother. And then that backfires on her later on. She's mm-hmm. like, no, I'm, I'm not your mother. And <laughs> so I, I love that she's trying to do it to stop him. But then he just goes crazier. And the fact that she is dressed as mother, it just it's it just not working in her favor, man. No. And it's just ratcheting it all up and everything. And eventually, I mean, she's. Uh, 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 she goes upstairs. She gets on the phone. Robert Loja comes up the back. And he's stairs. like, "Gotcha!" Because yeah. he's like, "I got the person who's red-handed." Yes, yeah. but she's surprised, and she, so she stabs, she stabs him. him. Stabs he falls, him. and the yeah. knife goes like hits the banister. And yep, oh, it's oh. great. And so Norman sees mother killing the psychiatrist. And he's like, because I was sitting there going like, this is the first time that he's seen a dead body. We've seen them in the movie. Right. Mm-hmm. But he hasn't seen a dead body until right now. And he's yeah. like, oh, oh, mother. <laughs> he's I just got to- that. <laughs> he does, he, comes he looks like the scream. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, oh. I have but, to protect you, mother. Right. I'll cover up for you. Yes. And that whole thing where it's just him going through that whole dialogue and then uh mary she's freaking out she's stabbing him i'm like uh she gets him in the shoulder she gets him in both hands yeah and he, he just gr- keeps walking he keeps it's just going not and everything yeah and she grabs the knife at one point with his bare hands and yeah. she pulls slices out of his that. palms and she gets him oh. on the side yeah. and just it's it's a relentless moment that that and i th- it needed to be because it builds up to to her end because they they're making their way down to the basement and everything which is you mm-hmm. know where we end up in these psycho movies um, I mean, they get to the basement and he's like, I, I, I'll, and he's been stabbed so much. He's losing blood. And she says as much, she's like, I, I'll, I'll save you. I'll, I'll do all this. And he kind of falls down in front of her as she's realizing or uh, what she thinks is like you, it was you, it was you the whole time you she, were killing she people. She sees the corpse she of see, her yeah. mother yes. buried in the coal. Yeah. As the coal comes down and sees her mother. And so she's like, um, it, she's there. She's dressed as mother. She raises the knife. Police burst in and shoot her. And it's it all beautiful. comes together. It is kind of it's beautiful. beautiful. Like it all really works. It's very, very well. Tense. It's very yeah. tense. anxiety provoking. Yes, that's why I was sitting there going like, "This is." I mean, I know we file these under horror movies, but this is a suspense movie. Yes. There's a lot of suspense. There's no like jump it's scares. It yeah <laughs> yeah yeah from a devoted yeah. devoted student. You yes, know? a few um, of them I would say. Yeah, they restate. So Mary is is killed. Yep. And then I guess the surprise is that the police are basically like, well, well she did it. Up. Yeah. <laughs> her, she and her mother did it. And then she killed her mother over Norman. And mm-hmm. you're just like, wait, how are you justified? But it, when you and like logically, I think it got, kind of 
makes sense. If you just look, because you got it this from is where the police you, yeah. perspective, right? Yeah. And yeah, that's what you and have they to have, do. and they have like one of the only witnesses of the whole thing was the the guy at the hotel who listened to them argue, and he could tell them word for word what the argument was about. Yep. And he's like, "Well, they're disagreeing on this, so clearly they came to head and up, over said, it." And yeah. yeah, if you come up there again, you'll yeah. be sorry. You'll be sorry. <laughs> so like, it and he backs says, he's like, it no, up. He, yeah, she didn't say she'd kill her. She said she'd be sorry. Yep. And yeah. that's what's great about this, and, I think. And 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 Norman is wounded. She yeah. tried to. She stabbed right? the shit out of him. Like logically, it it tracks. <laughs> it does. What makes this movie not only uh, good in like a first watch, b- but to rewatch it is that what we said perspective, because you can go through and there's so many like. So many characters where you have to look at what they saw yeah. throughout this movie mm-hmm. yeah. and try and figure out the what, story yeah. from there, what they knew, when they knew it for almost everybody mm-hmm. leading up to this. And that's a, and, it, and it, because it works, it's, it's real fun to do that. Yeah. But it also kind of goes to the writer. That's what I'm saying. It's like that is it seems when you watch these things and it works out that well, you're like. That just feels like that was the only way that story could go. But right. that is the result of a lot of fucking brain work <laughs> yeah. to try and get all these pieces and, you know, articulate all this stuff through yep. a story to get them to that point where it's like, by the end of it, it feels like it has gone the only way that this could have yeah. gone. Mm-hmm. I like yeah. that they restage the um, the psychiatrist explaining, you know, at the end of Psycho, the yeah, psychiatrist right. is like, they do that with the sheriff. Yeah, time. yeah. I was like, well, she would, you know, she killed uh, her mother and she did this and, you know, well, and you're like, huh? And poor Norman, poor Norman, poor Norman, right? Poor Norman. Mm-hmm. Just an innocent bystander. Yep. This whole Just thing. eating his grilled cheese sandwich. His toasted, mm-hmm. his toasted cheese sandwiches. With so, a glass of milk, Michaela. Yeah. That yeah. <laughs> <laughs> continues to be a sign of psychopathy. It's a lot of dairy. I think dairy drives people mad. <laughs> So he goes back home, yep. as you do. He does. And we're like, well, where else does this movie have to go? Yeah. Because I guess at this point, you're thinking that all the murders are then committed either by Mary or Lila. Mm-hmm. I never thought they would have been committed by Mary. And I always questioned yeah. up until this point. I'm like, would Lila go that far to get him committed? Does that make her no better than him at this point? Yeah. Right. Oh, and so yeah. you're thinking yeah. that and just yeah. like, so if she was responsible, just like what? Would she go that far right. just for this to well, become him? Does the, she think this is justifiable? There's but. a couple of scenes where, you know, Mary's like, and, you know, stop going around and like putting bloody uh, towels in the toilet and, you know, whatever. And yeah. Lila's like, what the f- are you talking, talking about? about? Right. And at but the we, time, you don't read, <laughs> but later you're like, she really didn't know what the hell right, she was talking right. about. Again, but that's what's great about it is because you don't, because she does have these moments where she admits that she has done things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so you don't know if she's lying mm-hmm. to her daughter because she doesn't want her daughter to think she's a horrible person for doing this stuff or if she really didn't do it. And I love that we're just questioning everything up mm-hmm. until the very end of this movie. Because then we get one last visitor who comes. And I was wondering, cause he's sitting there eating his, his sandwich, and I'm like, why is the table set for two? Or, or, or that like, was a really nice touch. Still going? Yeah. It was yeah. a really nice touch. I was like, why is the table set for two? And so uh, Mystery Third Party uh, shows up at his back door. Yeah, we see just the back of an elderly woman walking up towards the house. Hair. Mm-hmm. With silver hair. I'm like, oh, there's more. <laughs> who is this? Yeah, yeah, you're just like, who the fuck is that? At this point, that I was didn't the first know. Time you were. I didn't know. I was <laughs> like, oh, who's it going to be? I right. was excited. And so then you're very much on the edge of your seat. Yeah. After everything has happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so you're still going, oh, what's going on? And it's and Mrs. It? Spool. Mrs. Spool. So Mrs. His Spool is from the diner. Familiar, yep, she's she works at the diner. So we meet her earlier. There is a scene where he shows up at the diner. Yeah, it's it's da- not played for like when you rewatch that scene. Yes, there isn't any kind of tells, unfortunately, that would give this away. Right, because he's like, you know, she's like, and who are you? And he's like, I'm Norman Bates. And right then, you expect the actor to like give some kind of a tell that she knows who he is, mm-hmm. but she doesn't. But there are scenes where you cut to her reaction when like Dennis Franz is fucking with him. You cut to her reaction. Yeah, and right? she did say that she'd like, oh, I'm the one who told them to hire you. Yes, she yeah. does say that. Yeah. It's not giving anything yeah. away. Right. No, there's just these little moments. that's like, okay, this woman cares. Right. Like well, she does Very Christian is what she said. She, right? Yeah, she's I like, think very it's very Christian. Christian to forgive. Yeah, don't you think? And he's like, <laughs> yes. Seven, he's, like, oh. <laughs> he's like, I very much do. I appreciate it. But this is like the most daring thing I think that this movie did. Yeah, because, because you can either is... go with it or really. <laughs> Yeah. Out this, on this is decision. undermining Alfred Hitchcock's movie. 
uh, by with this addition. But this is kind but, of like uh, but, you but know, Norma, Michael Myers being uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's brother. But but, you know, but in, in Halloween right. too. But Norma this, still went mad. Norma still treated yes. him badly. Norma yes. is still responsible for yes. his uh, for for the the. For hurting him psychologically and everything. Yeah, and, and for all, she's intent, still responsible for all, all intents and purposes, like she was still his mother. Yes. That's yeah. not false. So this is just a little side thing added on to that. But everything still stands with yeah. Psycho. You're not undermining it too well, much. Yeah, I mean, it's saying, it's, so this is Norman Bates's real mother. Uh, this is Mrs. Spool. Her maiden name was what? Uh, Chambers? No, 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 her, no. Her spool is her. Um, oh, that was her maiden name. Norma's maiden name was spool. right, right. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And so Norman was adopted when when he was one years old. Mm-hmm. Right. right. She re- when she said she gives the whole story, she realized I couldn't raise a child. Yeah. And she had her own mental problems. This yeah. runs in the fucking family, I was folks. Institutionalized <laughs> for right. a while. All of them. Uh, Norma, <laughs> this woman, and Norman, and just the whole family. But that checks. It's a familial thing, right? It's both sisters and the kid. Yeah. Um. I do hate a secret family member reveal, though. I so how did you? How did you? I don't love it. I feel like you don't need this in this movie. I, I am the most. Uh, I'll, I, I will yell at any movie nowadays that brings up the secret family member. Yeah, I don't like it. But then why are you okay with this? That's what I'm saying. I'm if Mikhail is not okay with this. <laughs> it yeah. is, is okay. So is it doing? Is that? blasphemy to I think psycho. so. <laughs> I just don't think this movie needed this. You know, like it just it, I think I agree with that. that I it, hate it didn't an 11th hour decision like this, you know. I Oh, yeah. but it was baked into the script. I know, you know? but it yeah. doesn't it's not satisfying. It, I, to me, it's just not satisfying. I agree it didn't need it because we mm-hmm. could have ended this but then you'd have like you who po- actually you, killed everybody. You would assume you, it's Lila. I guess. You would assume it's mm-hmm. Lila. You also get the. And it's like she's actually homicidal to get this guy right. like locked up. So there, there are benefits to this. Like we get uh, yeah. an explanation for the killings. We also get a nice replacement for mother. Yeah. And we get that Norman did, is back on yeah, the track. Yeah. And of, I did like the little tiebacks. Like okay, so it makes sense. Norman wasn't like I mean he's crazy, but he wasn't crazy when he was talking about. My real mother. Right. Right. Like, I kind of liked that it tied back for a reason. Right. Yes. Yeah. And that, yeah. Yeah. And it also, it, I mean, it I is mean, baked into the script, you know, so it's like when it, when it happens, it was the, intention it, the whole way through. Yeah. It checks out logically. Yeah. And I, and but like, it is a no secret family member. For the, for the audience to pick up on that. It's supposed to be a surprise twist, and that just makes it feel tacked on i know it wasn't but it feels that way when i'm not given any evidence to think this until the reveal yeah because i think it's supposed to be a shock mm-hmm. right it's like yeah. what they're actually what you know and it then it feels cheap and it's like you're right you don't need it yeah but the the other thing that it does is like okay so now norman has a living mother mm-hmm. for a minute <laughs> 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 but He's crazy, so he now, kills now her. He's, crazy, yeah. he's poisons her like he does I his think, original mother. I think that's why I'm okay with the twist. Mm-hmm. It's his reaction to it. Okay. I th- I think that's what makes it okay for me because it's just like this random surprise twist, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he's like, "Well, I'm gonna kill you too." Like it just. <laughs> I think that's why I'm okay with it because it shows like okay, he really has snapped. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah, that like, does yep. kind of like yeah, yeah. He, he's not gonna go back now. Even that he knows the truth, he yeah. will not. He is. I yeah, he again. is gone. gone. Yeah, yeah. I think that's why I'm okay with it because I agree. It would have been. It's. It seems unnecessary, but to bring him back to that level, it works for me. Yeah, and it leads to. A great payoff, yeah. which I guess is, you know, when he carries her body up to mother's room. Yeah, because he hits her with the shovel, yeah, the cold does. shovel. That's a great effect. <laughs> which, yeah, which like, by the way, this this whole scene, um, no one knew about that until the day they shot it. <laughs> it was uh, only Tom Holland and uh, um, uh, Franklin knew that they were going to do the, the shovel and kill mother. And hopefully yeah. the, the actress. She gets, yeah. That's a pretty good effect. It's good. Yeah, they, everyone was given that part of the script the day of. No one knew they were going to do that. Oh, okay. So that, was, that was fun for, for them. The payoff is that, you know, and I love the way they shoot it too, because it's that over. It's, it is a shot from Psycho, I think, where you see Arbogast going up to the. But this time, he uh, Norman carries 
her body into uh, the yeah, room, the and we yeah. we don't cut away from that overhead shot in the yeah. staircase. But we hear we hear mother mother, and, yeah. and I think that's the actress from the 1960s one. I'm not positive, but it sounds like I, her. I think it might be. Yeah, they got her back, and she's mother again. And now it's like okay, so it's like it, at the end of it. It ends with this great Albert Whitlock matte painting. He does a bunch of matte paintings yeah, through yeah. the whole. And I we didn't talk about this on air, but Albert Whitlock, um, if you watched any universal fantasy or science fiction movie in the 80s, you saw his work. He was the king of uh, glass hanging matte uh, in front of the camera, mm. you know, uh, with a piece like cut out of it so mm. you could shoot through it and the thing and cat people and mm. like everything. But he also worked with Alfred Hitchcock and, you know, I mean, the, the guy was a master. Um, but it's that great, you know, uh, Norman at the top of the stairs yeah. looking at up at Mother on the, yeah, it's the poster. It's, you know, perfect. yeah, it's, it's, it's great. Uh, <laughs> and so it's like, is it happy <laughs> <laughs> for him i guess yeah i mean i'm happy it can be right and you're like, like norman's you... reunited with mother i mean what have we not wanted this whole <laughs> time? watch psycho three and four to find out you know i'm well, happy yeah yeah <laughs> psycho three um anybody seen it no i i have it at home i have not watched it yet don't do too much damage i won't do too much it's um <sighs> norman in that one it's 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 different because he's aware yeah Okay. Uh, you know, he is he enjoying it. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you okay. too much more, okay. but yeah, I mean, I don't regard that one as highly sure. as I do Psycho 2. I think they could have been done with Psycho 2. Uh Psycho 4 <laughs> is uh that was made for TV, it turns out. Right. Um in that one inexplicably the beginning. Right? So uh, I'm not ruining how Psycho 3 ends. Obviously, he's alive at the end of it. Uh, in Psycho 4, he is married with kids and living in, like, Florida or something, and he calls Dexter? into a radio show <laughs> who's talking about, like, serial killers. He's reformed now, so he calls in. I think I remember this. And yeah. it, the whole movie is then a prequel yeah. where Henry Thomas... Um, oh, wow. who at that point had not had only been known as Elliot from E.T. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, plays Norman Bates, and uh, and it's the whole it's the prequel. It's him right. and, it's and mother. Hotel, basically. Yeah, yeah. Olivia Hussey is mother in that oh, one, yeah. which okay. is a lot younger than because we were told right. in this one right. he was twelve. I remember that when he poisoned her, and she sounds like an, a very old lady. Mm -hmm. um, but that changes the dynamic considerably it's sure. kind of in 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 line with Bates also Motel. young norman bates was uh osgood perkins osgood in this Perkins, movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah director of long legs yeah, yeah. that's right and yeah actor. i guess yeah. son of anthony perkins yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 um osgood perkins um made a movie called uh, I Am the Pretty Thing That Lives in the House. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that, yeah. Uh, it was made for Netflix, but I know at the end of that, he dedicates it to his dad, mm -hmm. um, you know, because it was a house that, I guess, Anthony Perkins left him or something like that, and he said he needed to make it to feel like a connection with his dad. Because, oh. I mean, Anthony Perkins was, like, famously, like, the gayest man in Hollywood mm -hmm. <laughs> and went through, like, conversion therapy oh, and yeah. tried oh, wow. to be straight Yikes. and got married, and that's when he had... Um, Mm -hmm. Wow, Osgood Perkins. I know that. Yeah, he was mm -hmm. like for years. It was like him and Tab Hunter, the actor mm -hmm. Tab Hunter, okay. were a thing. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and then he found out that he had AIDS oh. um, during the making of Psycho Four. I, I think he found out through the tabloids because, like, the Inquirer got the results. Jeez, yikes! And so that's how he found out that he had AIDS, and I that's, think he died shortly brutal. before or after. Worst thing I've ever heard. Um, mm -hmm. The oh movie God. premiered. All right, yikes. thanks, Colin. Wow, <laughs> please, yes. Um, yep. Uh, Richard Franklin went on to do other movies, <laughs> including uh, Cloak and Dagger and Link, uh, as yeah, we said. Let's, let's find a peppy note to end this on. <laughs> Tom Holland. Tom Holland Tom had Tom Holland. Uh, great success with Fright Night and Child's Play. Igor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> time. Yep. All right. So now we're going to Save us, uh, Igor. go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, Psycho Two. Uh, what? 
Well, yeah, but before yeah, that. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There. I thought you were going straight. I was no. getting, yeah, that, that's, right. that's my fault. I was getting ready to clap. I was jumping the gun. But before that, we're going to summon, this is, we're going to give uh, Sean a chance uh, <laughs> to summon Igor to bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thank you, Igor. We should give him a Thank dog you. house that looks like the psycho house. That would be great. Right? Yeah. I think he'd love it. Igor, how's your mother? <laughs> Which um, one? Yeah. Ooh. Which, Which part, part of, part of, it? of yeah. it? We should let the good folks at home know how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Giant Freak Show. Or X. At Sat Freak Show. Or by email. Saturday Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram and threads at Saturday Night Freak Show. We got a lot of a lot of mail this week. Ooh, uh, a lot of mail. About <laughs> Psycho 2. Amos Martinez. Sorry, we got so much email. Some of your comments uh, we didn't get to. We may get to them next week. I'm sorry, but there's just a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Amos Martinez says, it still surprises me how well this one turned out. The shovel kill at the end is awesome. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. R. Curl says, wonder how this movie would have been received if the original sequel novel by Robert Block had been faithfully adapted. Probably not well. <laughs> not well. Not what not we've well. talked about. Ryan Harvey says, obviously no one was going to best Bernard Herrmann's score to the original, but getting Jerry Goldsmith was a terrific idea. How do you think his score holds up? I like it. It takes good. a completely yeah. different approach from Herrmann's. Yeah, I, I liked it. it. I, I like it. I it's it one of my favorite movie scores, <laughs> yeah, I think. I like it. It's reused in the director's cut of Legend, which was also oh, cool. Jerry okay. Goldsmith. Um, yeah, Jerry Goldsmith's like one of the top 10 like, yeah, film composers oh, of all time. Yeah, it was good. Uh, Abel965 says, I remember when it came out, if Psycho had to have a sequel, it was the best possible attempt. Far better movie than it had any right to be. True. Yeah. Asobi Detura says, I think this film is a triumph and underrated. The notion of doing a sequel to Psycho is a prime example of a fool's errand. But honestly, they did good by creating a sympathetic look at a mentally ill former convict trying to stay on the path while the systems fail him and his community community marginalizes him. Hell yep. yeah. There you go. That's actually an interesting point that the first movie makes Norman sympathetic because he's got an overbearing mother. Mm-hmm. The second movie makes him sympathetic again, even though we know he's a killer. Yes. <laughs> That's a magic trick. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Uh, Nelson Nascimento says, great performance by Perkins and script by Holland. Great sequel all around considering the pedigree. It doesn't appear you hear much about Holland outside of Fright Night and Child's Play, but his work is solid. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He's a pillar of the horror genre for sure. Yeah. Yeah, he knows how to write characters mm-hmm. for sure and how to write tension. It's fantastic. Richard Kratzer says, this is a great sequel. Nothing will compare to the original. They rarely do, but this was one of the good ones. In my opinion, Perkins never got the credit he deserved as an actor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Simon Carter says, strangely, I saw this movie before seeing the original. It oh, holds up as a solid sequel. Very ballsy to take on such an acclaimed classic, but goddamn if they didn't pull it off. It must have been confusing to watch this one. I mean, I think it happens wow. a lot. I saw yeah. Halloween too before I ever saw Halloween. So I think depending that's on what's just, running that's on. More that is, that's more straightforward concept. Confusing. Yeah, the, that's way more confusing. of a straightforward concept. Yeah, but movie. I think like this one, because I may have seen this before I saw the first one, to be honest with you, but the, it depending on how old you are, Richard, I, I think Psycho was such a part of the, you know, you just knew about it without Tom. E- even having to say it. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Simon Carter said, oh, sorry. Uh, Adam Kaler says, um, that was Simon who said the last thing. Sorry, Simon. Uh, Adam Kaler said, surprisingly enough, Psycho 2 was a decent follow-up to the classic original. Anthony Perkins is great in the role, and I felt some empathy for him this time around. Yep. James Boy says, we rewatched this one recently, and it really stands up. My only issue is the 80s gore inserts during the kills feel like a product of its time and doesn't fit the tone of the original very well. Well, this isn't the original. This yeah, is product the of its time for sure, but I think that is appropriate for this. I think so too. Yeah. As we discussed earlier, it really, yeah. it's, it's punctuated based on you know, what you yeah. expected from the it's, first one when this one came out. It has to honor the original, but not be the original. Yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, last week, we watched a movie called Body Parts, oh, yeah. and Louis Film 24 says, movie trivia... Body Parts was based on a Boileau and Narcajax We tried that last week. Which I read as a teenager. The writers behind Vertigo and Les Diabolique, which Mm -hmm. was also remade as 
Diabolic, I yes. think, Diabolic. for Sharon Stone. Uh, I liked it at the time, but I need to rewatch it. Uh, the week before that, we watched a movie called Salem's Lot, and John Olson says, my parents very wisely did not let me watch it, and I, by extension, they would have never slept again. <laughs> DB775577 says... Remember, I remember seeing this for the first time and it scared the shit out of me, but I also remember David Soul playing the main character and remembering what a good actor he was. Mm -hmm. That's ironic because last week I think somebody said they thought David Soul was a bad actor. <laughs> right? uh, Mark Harrison says Salem's Lot was decent. It was much better than that mess, Midnight Mass. And I'm sorry to anyone who likes Flanagan. Oh, damn. I think we're on the opposite side of that. Like, we liked Midnight Mass. Yeah. I like Midnight Mass. I haven't watched of it, but I like Flanagans, Flanagan. It's He's... towards the bottom for me, though. Oof. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> what was that one with the butterflies? That's no, Bly Manor's the worst. Bly Manor's the worst one. Bly Manor's yeah, the worst. Yeah, but he really didn't do a whole lot with no. Bly Manor. Didn't he produce it? Yeah, yeah. That's he about produced it. it, and he and directed the, the first and Midnight second. Midnight Club sucked. I didn't like that. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, oh, actually, I'm lying. Fall of the House of Usher is lower than Midnight Mass, for sure. And Before I Wake? Is that what it's called? That's the butterfly one. It's the butterfly one. He also, we all always forget... um. Gerald's game? I don't forget I like that. I love That's great. Game That's is great. Good. I love Gerald's game. Hush. I love Hush. Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen Hush. Oh, it's so I gotta good. watch Hush. So okay. good. Oh, that okay. one Sorry. scene in Gerald's game <laughs> makes my watching. like stomach. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Just the so the, the, the turn. The, of, the term alone is gross. It is. Yes. Just the the turn of the monster in the dark. Yeah. Oh. Mm. It scared the shit out. It horrified so me. So horrified. And I was just not expecting that. Mm -hmm. uh, love it. Mm -hmm. love, love it. it. Love it. Love it. These are all Flanagan reasons all you should watch Dr. Sleep. If I you will, love uh, Mike Flanagan so much, you should watch uh, Dr. Sleep. It, it has gone up the yeah. list. The man now in charge I of need to the exorcist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I believe in Flanagan, so... Right. And if, God if nothing else extras is related that I believe in, I believe in Flanagan. Yeah, Godspeed to him. Yes. Uh, one more comment. The week before, we watched a movie called Bats, and Bats? Rye Guy Bats. says, I always remember the actor Leon best from the Little, Little Richard TV movie and the Temptations TV movie, oh. and he was great in both parts. Oh, he was a biopic guy for a bit, yeah. huh? Nice. Well, we want to thank each one of you for writing in. We really... Appreciate it. And now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, Psycho 2, starting with Sean. <laughs> Sean, what'd you think? What did I think? Well, this is what I thought. Wait, no, you got to do it in mother voice. If you're, if you're two Sean's. Oh, you I can't. <laughs> oh, no, I can't. I don't think I can. I, I haven't uh, perfected my old lady voice. I haven't even tried my old lady voice. So I'm not going to do it here tonight. I will practice at home in front of the mirror, as I do with all my other voices. Uh, uh, that's how I hone my Jack Palance. Um, no, uh, <laughs> Psycho 2. I mean, you know, uh, as far as like they're making a sequel to one of the most known and prolific movies ever made. So that's a hard job in and of itself. But uh, uh, the direction, the writing, the cinematography, of the acting by Anthony Perkins, uh, I think they're all really very good for all the reasons we explained here tonight. Um, uh, I, I love that the movie keeps you guessing the entire way, all the way up to the end, um, edge of my seat. Um, it's also, it's like I said before, it's fun to go back and rewatch this movie um, to just watch each character and knowing what their motivations are and, and to see how they play it to see the perspective of all the other characters on, you know, what they think is going on versus what is actually going on. Um, and I think it all lands at the end. I think it all basically very clear. Uh, it, you know, it's a toss up on whether you like the reveal of the actual mother at the end or not. But, um, I mean, from top to bottom, start to finish, I thought this was a really good movie. Very entertaining. Um, yeah, I really liked it. If you're going to make a sequel, uh, I mean, this is how you do it. And, uh, yeah, I don't think they get much better than this. So, um, yeah, Psycho 2. I think it's really good, and you should definitely watch it. Michaela, what'd you think? Yeah, I think um, it's interesting, the attitude that, like, it's so crazy that they made a sequel to this because Psycho is the original slasher movie, right? right. And all slasher movies have a million sequels. That is right. a hallmark of the genre. Why wouldn't this have a million right. sequels? Well, nowadays, kind of I mean, that's kind of like, yeah. that, that is what we think. We've been ruined like, what, by the fact that they went after Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, but when this Chainsaw came out, remated. there was what? Three Friday the 13th and two Halloweens? Yeah, but yeah. like so, none of them were regarded as like, a, it's like making a sequel to Gone with the Wind or <laughs> Citizen Kane or something. You know, it was like, it was like But we that. do get sequels to those types well, of now movies. now we you do, know? Yeah. Like, This but opened I just, the door to all that. But I don't know if it opened the door. I think it just took advantage of the door that was already open we can like we can, jaws would be a good example of yeah exactly yeah it's i i don't think the regard of a movie makes it immune to a sequel and ever um i don't think anything's untouchable so um i you know 
I bet, you know, we're going to get Christopher Nolan remakes within the next 10 to 20 years. I would, you know, Damn. like, I, yeah, so I, remake nothing's Tenet untouchable. Make Makes sense? In- intelligible, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, yeah, I really enjoy it. I think it's the best you can hope for in this type of movie. Um, I always have like a mixed feeling about movies that make the villain sympathetic, but I think it makes the most sense for this movie. It makes more sense for this movie to do it than for like the Halloween movies to do it. Yes. I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Cause he's a split person. Yeah. Yeah, is, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I love just like, yeah, the court system worked against you. Now he's free. Like that's, that's the device we're using to start this movie. Great. Makes sense. Love it. Don't have to have a sartain yeah. character. Believable. We see yeah, all the time. Exactly. <laughs> right, yeah. well, oh, you the mean the world. justice system fucked up? Okay. This documentary yeah, exactly. was great. Right. Yeah. This does, like, couldn't you see the, like, I, I mean, when the true I was, crime version of it. Yes, exactly. But when I was watching this, I was thinking about the fact, like, could you imagine if Jeffrey Dahmer got let out <laughs> and then people were going to his house and breaking in to smoke weed and were like, just and just poking the bear by throwing stuff at him and just like, like it's really crazy to me the way the townspeople react to him in this. <laughs> um, but no, I like this is the best you can hope for for this type of movie. It was really interesting. It's an interesting concept. It's well done, well executed, and some really interesting camera movements that. I think are very thoughtful. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I'm going to recommend it. Colin, what do you think? Thoughtful is a good word mm-hmm. for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I guess cause I, I was saying reverent, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, um, I have lived with this movie for so long and have loved it unabashedly for so long that I may be blind to any of its faults. Like <laughs> I don't see any faults with this movie. Um, I mean, I would put it up there with, uh, you know, Psycho is a great movie. A great movie, yeah. right? A perfect mm-hmm. movie. Uh, so it's like is, Halloween, Halloween 2, mm-hmm. Psycho, Psycho 2. Is that a good equivalent? Uh, Halloween 2 is lesser. Lesser to this? Lesser to Halloween. This is like, I like this a lot. I mean, yeah. I like Psycho and I like this a lot. Like, this is a good companion piece to that movie. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know. I I don't have any uh, uh, real criticisms of it. I just um, the yeah. I I, I love it so much. Uh, this has been always one of my favorite. Movies. It's like Star Trek two to me. You know, it's like <laughs> it's hard. To Empire say Strikes than... Back. Well, I don't know. Empire Strikes Back is better than Star Wars. This is not better than Psycho, mm-hmm. but uh, this is a reverent and uh, worthy sequel. If you're gonna do it, um, like this it. is one of the best ones like of all time mm-hmm. and. Yeah, I think, you know, we said it before, but you got to like the writer needs more credit than he has been Mm -hmm. given for for pulling this off. Uh, Franklin's direction is uh, channeling the spirit of Alfred Hitchcock. Mm -hmm. Anthony Perkins, I think I think he does better work here than he does in the original uh, Psycho, because I think he has more. More, work more to work with, with more here, yeah. range to work with. Yeah. Um, 22 years of experience yes. to add to the character. Yes, yeah. Um, so I would definitely recommend this movie. Holly, what do you think? Um, yeah, so this was obviously my first watch of this. I knew nothing of this other than Anthony Perkins was back. Um, and I think it played incredibly well. I, I think clearly you guys saw my reactions when we were watching it. Like it worked on me for sure. Um, the twist, like it worked on me. I didn't, I did not see any of this coming. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have a lot of criticism of this movie. It was just really good. Um, we've, we've already said it. Psycho is psycho. You know, it is one of the ultimate movies. It's one of the greatest movies. Um, and I think they picked the perfect group of people to bring a sequel to life. Um, I think there was so much thought and attention and into detail in this movie. And it really shows. I think Tom Holland did an amazing job writing this script. It's so good. All the little nuances and the way people talk to each other. It's believable. I, I really believe these characters. I, I love that we don't know whether Anthony Perkins is going crazy or what's going on. Like, it's just, it's so well written. It's so well directed, so well acted. This, this was such a good sequel. Um, I was, I was on the fence when we had like the surprise uh, new mother at the end. I was like, what, what are we doing here? But then his reaction to it and the final scene, it paid off so well. I'm like, okay, I'm okay with it. I'm on board. I just yeah I I really enjoyed this I thought it was a fantastic movie um 
yeah, I don't think you could get much better as far as sequels go. This this really did it justice. So I definitely recommend this movie. And it's got an audio commentary with Tom Holland on it. So Perfect. you can learn so much from the Perfect. man. I, so they're giving him his due because they gave him and only him the commentary yeah. on the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I think Richard Franklin may have. Uh, I think he was already him. passed. Probably. Okay, yeah, yeah. Probably. yeah. Highly Psycho recommend. Two. Psycho so 2. That, that means uh, that's a freak show. Mm-hmm. Recommend, unanimous recommend. And that means you are contractually obligated yeah. by listening to the show to watch it. And it was a, it was a great uh, way to intro this year's spooky season. Yeah. Spooky. Yay! Oh, did we mention um, <laughs> the original Psycho, uh, like a year or two ago? They found a print of it, like in oh, France. It's, yeah, like, that longer version with those. Mm-hmm. Few yeah, scenes. it's yeah. got I don't know some uh, several seconds of extra stuff, yes. but yeah. like seconds, I think that, but it adds to mm-hmm. it. Yeah, is that now th- that were cut from the American version? Yep. Is that now like the official version of Psycho? I, I don't, don't know. If know. It is like the, I, I know, haven't heard. I haven't heard much about it. I know there's the Blu-ray that's available solely that you can purchase. I know it was in the collector's set of Hitchcock stuff. That extended version yeah. is in there. So it's, I think it's right now making its way out to. Yeah, I don't know if being, you stream it. Is that the only version that you see? I don't know. Oh, that's a good question. I think that's, that'll determine it. If it makes it to streaming, is like, oh, if you just pick Psycho, will you get that version? Yeah. Right. It's yeah. a good question. Also, but it, yeah. in Maxine, Elizabeth Debicki talks about, oh, yeah, they just saw, shot a sequel to Psycho here a few years ago, if you can yeah. believe it. But she, I love that she's being all derisive about that, but she's directing The Puritan too. Right. Like, yeah. she's like, can you believe them? Yeah, but like, you can only Psycho. hope to be this well, good. Like, yeah, it's like, come on. And you're directing think, the Puritan but, 2 calling the I fuck guess out. that's part of the thing with sequels is uh, the idea with a sequel is you have to be as good as, or better than the original, right. right? That's like the deal going into it. Mm-hmm. And I think the thing with Psycho is you're sitting there going, like, it's a perfect movie. Like, yeah. right. where can, yeah. like you can't hope to be as good mm-hmm. and you're not going to be better. So you're fighting a, win- a losing battle. Mm-hmm. And sometimes. Sometimes you win. But sometimes, yeah, it works yeah, out. Sometimes it works <laughs> um, And then there was the Gus Van Zandt Shot for Shot remake, yes. but that is Stay a story tuned. for yeah. another oh, day. Can we watch that in dual vision? <laughs> psycho on the left. Oh. Gus Van Zandt Psycho on the right. Oh Let's God. do it. That would be interesting. I, I would be, I would I would be down. I don't I think it matches up, that. though, because, yeah. There's some, there's but it's close. But th- Gus that's Van Zandt scenes do. go on longer. So, yeah, right. Yeah. But sometimes I want two giant TVs in my living room just so I can do that. But I, but mm-hmm. I may have a problem with me. So, mm-hmm. um, so next week we're gonna watch a movie that's chosen by Michaela. What are we gonna watch next week? <laughs> we're gonna do another expo- exploration of a legacy sequel many oh. years later. I'm sorry, but oh. we have to talk about Texas Chainsaw 3D. Okay. 3D. 3D. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Yeah. Do your thing, cuz. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. The scuttles. My original pick for the week bef- after that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, so. <laughs> All right. Next oh, week, Texas the Chainsaw. Podcast is over. Massacre. No, no Texas no, Chainsaw. Just Texas, Texas Chainsaw. 3D. 3D did it. Yeah. That's right. In 3D? Yes. I have it in 3D. All right. Well, I guess we're watching in 3D then. Oh, there we go. Colin, you know I hate 3D. <laughs> it's, it's barely There's not in much 3D. in this movie, trust yeah. me. All right. All right. So <laughs> you can watch in 2D. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> you won't miss anything. Next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show, we hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>